Hello listeners, and welcome to Views on Health. On the program today is Dr. Kishara Gunaratna, consultant neurologist and a senior lecturer, Faculty of Medicine, University of Morotowa. A warm welcome back to SLBC and our studios. And it's a pleasure to have you with us, Doctor. Thank you very much. And uh, the topic under discussion on the program today is Parkinson's disease. A very, very interesting topic, a white topic, and a problem that has afflicted many people, not only in Sri Lanka, but across the globe. Having said that, over to your doctor to explain what Parkinson's disease is. Um, so Parkinson's disease is a, uh, is a disorder that uh, generally affects uh, mainly uh, the elderly population or the, the older adult. Uh, it, it, uh, it's, a, it's what we call a neurodegenerative disorder where there is progressive loss of uh, neurons or nerve cells in the brain that result in, uh, in uh, uh, a set of uh, symptoms uh, that uh, that an old adult would ex- uh, experience, and that's uh, often the commonest uh, uh, symptoms that uh, an, uh, such a patient would have would include slowing down, uh, and uh, in our lingo would be uh, cl- uh, sort of uh, um, described as bradykinesia or bradykinesia, uh, where which means sl- mainly slowing down. Um, and with the slowing down, uh, patients become a little, a little bit more rigid. Uh, they're not as flexible uh, as they were before, um, and they, there might be uncontrollable, uncontrollable shaking, where they, uh, for example, uh, sh- uh, shaking or tre- what we call tremors, uh, involving, uh, say, the hands. Right, and we do often see that mainly in in society, certain uh, you know older adults, uh, when when while they're seated, you know, quite relaxed, we see uh, them uncontrollably shaking, and that can be actually a symptom of Parkinson's disease. So they can be slow, they're more rigid, there's uncontrollable shaking, and of co- often they they lose their balance. Uh, and uh, as as the disease progresses, uh, they suffer from uh, many falls, um, and uh, those are the main uh, symptoms of of uh, Parkinson's, and it's often, an, as I said, a neurodegenerative or uh, a disorder that, that is as a result of loss of nerve cells uh, in uh, in the brain, and it's a particular nerve cell that we are uh, that is often uh, lost. Uh, it's a nerve cell that secretes a, 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 a chemical called uh, dopamine. Uh, so, so these what we call dopaminergic cells are lost, and as a result, uh, they uh, cause these this constellation of uh, symptoms. Taking it from there, doctor, you say it's in the older people. The first question is males or females or both can uh, be Males affected? and females can be both affected. So, uh, yeah, men and women are equally affected. Uh, it is indeed commoner in the older adult, uh, 65 and above. However, it is not, uh, it is not uncommon to see uh, younger uh, people coming uh, uh, or presenting with these symptoms. I think the um, quintessential example, uh, sorry, the uh, um, uh, phenotypic uh, example of of, uh, of a celebrity having Parkinson's would be Muhammad Ali, uh, and uh, he had Parkinson's way before uh, he hit sixty five. Uh, and I think uh, Michael J. Fox, uh, one of the uh, main actors in Back to the Future, uh, very f- uh, famous uh, uh, movie uh, that a lot of people uh, would have enjoyed in the 80s, uh, again, has Parkinson's and uh, again, the age of onset was a little before 65. So it's not, it, it is indeed more common in the older, uh, older adult or old age, but it's, uh, it is also seen in, uh, in younger people as well. So, Doctor, these sort of uh, symptoms you uh, spoke of a while ago, like slowing down and or becoming more rigid, loss of flexibility. Mm. So, would that be in the hands and the legs in the oh, movements? Yeah. And, uh, 
and sort of uncontrollable shaking. How does that happen, doctor? So it's a tremor. Uh, tremor. So it's a tremor. It's often at rest. The, the whole uh, body shakes? Um, often in the uh, uh, hands um, uh, or what we call the distal part of the hands or uh, fingers, as it were. Uh, we, we describe the, the, the tremor that we see as a pill rolling tremor uh, where uh, the, the uh, uh, thumb and the uh, index finger actually uh, mimic someone, uh, ro you know, rolling a pill in between their fingers. Uh, so that's that's a typical tremor that we generally see with Parkinson's, and they've often, when, when when the patient or the person with Parkinson's is often relaxed, uh, not doing particularly anything, uh, that's when the tremor is uh, at its worst. Uh, so that's when we actually notice a tremor. Uh, it's often seen in the hands, but it can affect uh, the jaws, it can affect the, the feet. Uh, and often uh, it's, it starts off on one side of the body, uh, and as time progresses, uh, uh, it affects uh, the other side as well. So it's a, it's a progressive disorder uh, or illness. Uh, starts on one side and then progresses on to the other side. It could be the side. It could be the side, it could be right or left, but it can start on can start or initiate from one side and then move on to involve the other side as well. So, doctor, if it starts on one side, and then obviously they will seek medical attention. The family would obviously bring the person to uh, the doctor, and then uh, could anything be done to prevent it? sort of progressing or uh, I mean it, it can't just come to the other side again that fast it will be a period of time uh, would you be able to say approximate period of time or is that yeah, or from person to person it, it varies from person to person but it, it's on average we would say that Parkinson's progresses over uh, a decade or more so it's a it's a slowly progressive uh, disease but it, it progresses slowly so if you're 65 you know it progresses by by the, by the time you're 75 I suppose uh, it would have progressed on to the other side and there would have been uh, and and the natural history is that you would be severely debilitated debilitated by uh, as a result of its progression uh, and often we find patients who they're, they're stuck in bed they're unable to move uh, as it progresses to uh, towards the end um, so yes so it's a slowly progressive but uh, takes at least uh, 10 years or more to actually progress to a, a level where uh, it, it's severely de debilitating with regards to treatment uh, there's nothing that we can that can be done to reverse the process uh, there's a lot of research uh, that's going around all around the world however there's no uh, uh, treatment to reverse the process, but there is treatment available to actually ameliorate the uh, the symptoms that uh, and the severity of the symptoms uh, that these patients would uh, experience. Would it impact on eyesight, on uh, uh, speech, uh, taste? Um, well, with regards to eyesight, pro probably not, but it does uh, affect uh, um, uh, sleep. Uh, it, it can uh, it can cause uh, disruption in sleep. Uh, you can be, often they uh, uh, sorry uh, they can be uh, sort of uh, they can they can be sleepy during the day. Uh, it can affect the uh, smell um, and it can also sp affect speech. Um, uh, mainly uh, the speech slows down. They're more mo monotonous. And as it progresses, they're much more in, uh, unintelligible in the sense uh, we find it uh, difficult to uh, sort of uh, understand what they say. So yes, it can affect uh, things uh, that uh, that we. So speech is one example. Sleep is one example. Uh, it can affect other parts of the body, for example. Uh, often they come with constipation, and that's very problematic, especially when we are an old adult. Uh, so yes, it can affect a lot of uh, other parts apart from you know the shaking, uh, the the tremor, the uh, slowing, uh, and all the symptoms that I've uh, elaborated on before. So the medication actually will only help the person to uh, control the condition to some point. 
but beyond that there is no cure at this point in time because as you said research is going on but the real cause has not been found uh, it's not so much the cause but uh, in most uh, um, uh, cases where they it's a degenerative disorder uh, there's loss of nerve cells and there is uh, there's no way of replenishing the nerve cells because nerve cells once they die off like not like say other parts of the body where say for example if you take the scale cells of the skin there's they always regenerate they they may degenerate but they always have a way, a way of regenerating uh, that is not the case when it comes to nerve cells and that's why when we lose the nerve cells we lose it forever so there's no way of actually uh, reproducing at the moment, for the moment, uh, those cells that are essential for us to move fluently f uh, with a uh, with lot of fluidity uh, and that's why we don't have a cure at the moment. So doctor, in this situation it's not advisable to keep that patient alone, am I right? Should there be somebody around to take care? Yeah, so it depends on at, uh, what stage of Parkinson's or Parkinson's disease that you're uh, referring to. The early parts of Parkinson's, they're often independent. And the medication, if they take it, take the medication early, they are, uh, their quality of life actually uh, improves dramatically. They're able to function normally. Uh, however, even with medication, uh, the Parkinson's disease does actually progress uh, uh, to, a, to a stage where that may be many years down the uh, you know down the line uh, that it may progress to a stage where they may be dependent on a carer uh, and they may need uh, care for you know 24 7 uh, care uh, but that takes a while so often medication and uh, other types of therapy for example physiotherapy helps quite a bit occupational therapy makes uh, speech therapy to uh, um, uh, to help with the speech often helps uh, to maintain the quality of life. Could it lead to memory loss? Um, yes, uh, that again, as, as Parkinson's does progress, uh, there's loss of uh, cells or nerve cells that, that are involved with memory, cognition and so on and so forth, which is called Parkinson's d dementia or Parkinson's related dementia. Uh, and yes, so often deficits in memory, uh, mainly, uh, you know, Often when you tell something, uh, it doesn't really register in these patients and then they ask the same question over and over again. Uh, that may be actually, uh, you know, the onset of Parkinson's dementia and uh, we need to look for those symptoms and maybe assess their memory uh, to look for, for, for this entity and treat that. Um, but yes, I, I would say as Parkinson's progresses, uh, dementia may set in as well. So the treatment is through medication? Uh, yes, there is medication available, but again, as I said, there is no medication to reverse the process. So the medication has obviously got to be continued uh, uh, day in, day out? Day in, day out, and, and, and maybe uh, as uh, time progresses, uh, the medication, the requirement with regards to dosage as well as frequency. So sometimes uh, medication may need to be taken every three hours per day. So it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an uphill task when it comes to taking the medication. But then um, uh, patients do uh, get, um, I mean, without the medication, they are, uh, they are uh, basically lost, as it were, because it's the medication that helps them move. Otherwise, they, they, may, they, are, uh, they are just seated there, immobile. Uh, they are, every part of their body hurts because they are, they are unable to move and they are stiff. Uh, it's a very painful uh, disease. Uh, if not treated. Would you say, doctor, that um, um, a patient who is so affected um, can uh, even uh, at some point in time in his or her life um, feel uh, depression? Is that, is that part of it? Would it be, yes. they have such feelings? Uh, yes, of course. And uh, uh, there are what we call non-motor uh, symptoms of uh, Parkinson's, these non-motor meaning uh, things that don't really affect the locomotive um, system uh, in the uh, locomotor system of, of the body. Uh, so uh, depression, anxiety or 
very commonly associated with Parkinson's and actually what research actually uh, demonstrate is, uh, demonstrates is that depression and anxiety might, might, might actually precede uh, the, sim the, the symptoms or the motor symptoms or the symptoms that we associate Parkinson's with uh, by many years. So maybe six, seven, eight years uh, prior to the onset of uh, the typical symptoms, which includes the uncontrollable shaking, the slowness, and and the and the rigidity in in that in those patients. Uh, so you those symptoms are, can proceed uh, by many years. So it's uh, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, depression is often associated uh, with with Parkinson's and needs to be identified and often is unidentified even by medical profession, uh, professionals because we don't really look into it. Uh, and if you do treat uh, the depression, the quality of life uh, of those patients does improve. Uh, and uh, of, often what we notice in patients with Parkinson's is that they, there's lack of motivation. Uh, what we see in a lot of patients is uh, as, as they're, if, if they're more active, uh, uh, even in their old age, if uh, say, for example, if they're playing tennis, uh, a sport, cycling, and so on and so forth, if even a brisk walk, all of these actually, or what we call the activity index, as it increases, the, the, the effect of the disease on that particular person is actually far less than a person who's actually uh, more sedentary. Um, so uh, even to motivate uh, a person with Parkinson's to do these kind of activities, uh, depression can be a big barrier and that needs to be identified and treated. Doctor, you spoke of rigidity and then uncontro uncontrollable shaking. Two opposites. Two opposites. Uh, um, so it's various parts of the, uh, say, uh, the, we'll, we'll take the, the, uh, the hand, uh, the distal parts of the hand might be shaking, uh, whereas uh, the rest of the hand, uh, you know, the hand or, oh. or the arm uh, can be very rigid. So uh, they might not be able to move it, but it might be, un, you know, under voluntary control, whereas there might be uncontrollable shaking associated with the time. So, oh. so what about a person's intake of food in this condition? Uh, can they eat on their own or if they can't, somebody has to feed them? Again, as I said, it's uh, it's at what stage of Parkinson's. Right. So it's uh, if, if you are talking about the, the, the end stage of Parkinson's, they might not be as... Uh, independent and may need help with uh, daily uh, your daily activities, uh, including feeding yourself and uh, grooming yourself. Uh, but may, the may, the you know the early parts of Parkinson's, uh, they are often independent, and if treated appropriately, they are actually the quality of life is actually not that bad. We would like family support, uh, psychological support, uh, social support, all that help. Of course, so it's a it's it's not only the 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 medic uh, that's involved in uh, in treating these patients. It's a it's as uh, we often say it's a multidisciplinary team uh, that actually helps in these patients. So again, we we often uh, try to get uh, uh, a lot of other you know special um, people of various other. Uh, specialties or expertise getting involved in the treatment. For example, we need speech therapists, we need occupational therapists, we need physios, uh, we need nutritionists. Uh, for example, uh, uh, nutrition, especially in the old age group, is very important and you need to have certain level of muscle bulk, um, level of activity to actually counter these negative effects of Parkinson's. So, Doctor, having heard all of this, um, obviously, the condition cannot be reversed. It progresses. If in the future there is a, a sort of research that will show exactly what is going wrong and what can be done, hopefully things can change. But as of now, and maybe in the near future, we can't see uh, a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Um, I wouldn't say uh, uh, things are advancing very, very quickly and there are lots of uh, investigational products with regards to, say, for example, stem cell, uh, stem cell research uh, where we are looking at regenerating the nerve cells and so on and so forth. Uh, various types of uh, therapies are being looked into, but uh, yes, it might take some time. But I think I'm very optimistic. I think we will get there.
Well, I didn't want to strike this chord and note, but I was just wondering how much of, you know, progress can be seen right now in terms of finding a solution. Um, but having said that, and uh, it'll be go good to hear that uh, there is uh, some sort of progress in the research that is being done. So until such time, there's tangible, you know, sort of solution to the problem. Uh, patients have got to live the way they're living. So they're going to be in under medication for life. And um, do you think, uh, as you said, depending on the stage of the condition, uh, from the, when it's at the onset, the person can handle himself or herself better. But as things progress, because it is progressive, the, the condition, and uh, negative progression there is, uh, obviously there be some, has to be somebody around. So if, even giving medication like food, uh, if they have to be taken on time, and if the, it doesn't happen, it can affect the of condition. Course. Of course. And especially in today's lifestyle, not on Sri Lanka, but the world over, where people don't have somebody around all the time, and everybody's leading busy lifestyles. So uh, if we don't have a system uh, for sort of social service people to come in, visit and attend to things. So these are sort of few drawbacks that we have here. But uh, with all of that, uh, there is then um, a, a sort of a negative outlook, if I may put it that way, for these patients. So what would you recommend? So I must uh, agree with you to a certain degree that, you know, as um, uh, we are indeed, Sri Lanka is indeed a aging population and we are seeing more and more people uh, in the older adult age group. Um, and as as a result, we're seeing more and more patients with Parkinson's and Parkinson's disease. What, what my main uh, message is uh, to patients who are, who they, uh, who are living with Parkinson's is that it can be effectively treated at least uh, to uh, a, ma a major proportion of uh, patients can be effectively treated. Uh, yes, you need a, a social network or, a, uh, or, or support to um, uh, treat these patients because you, especially if, if they're at the uh, latter um, end of, of the uh, end of the spectrum of, of disease. Uh, but again, I think uh, the main message here is, I think, to the administrators of, of this country, uh, especially with regards to uh, health, uh, is to make sure that uh, as the, the, the older age, you know, adults actually, uh, when they age, these kind of disorders can be more prevalent and we need to actually look into uh, social services, expanding our social services to actually help these patients with Parkinson's. Thank you, Doctor. Time has caught up with us. And we end this very interesting discussion on Parkinson's disease. We thank Dr. Kishada Gunaratna, consultant neurologist, senior lecturer, Faculty of Medicine, University of Moratua, for being with us on the program and sharing your expert knowledge on this very vital topic, Parkinson's disease. Thank you so much, Doctor. Pleasure. Thank you to Manjula Sinivaratna for technical assistance. I'm Fatima Razi Kader. Saying good night and looking forward to your company next Monday, same time on Views on Health. <laughs>